Hey, John Harris here with the Rock Metal Podcast. Join me as we get to go behind the scenes into what goes into producing records and making music as we interview some of our favorite and soon-to-be favorite bands. Today, we're chatting with Vile Valo and his new project, dubbed VV. For fans of him, the 69 Eyes, the Rasmus, and Caron, we'll be chatting about Vile Valo's new album, Neon Noir, produced and recorded by Vile Valo himself. We'll get to hear the story about how all of that came to be, what it's like to create a solo album for the first time, and so much more. So please stay tuned to the very end. But first, let's check in with our beautiful sponsors. Asher Media Relations, doing public relations for everything loud. For your band needs to be seen and heard in print, online, and radio, head over to ashermediarelations.com. That's ashermediarelations.com. Mention the Rock Metal Podcast and get your band noticed. Syndical Music is a full-service agency for musicians offering record label services, marketing, branding, production, and management. Head over to syndicalmusic.com. That's syndicalmusic.com. S-Y-N-D-I-C-O-L music.com. Mention the Rock Metal Podcast and take your music career to the next level. Vile, thank you so much for coming on today. Go ahead and say hi to all of our beautiful listeners. Uh, howdy, one and all. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's, an, uh, yeah, it's an incredible honor to be back in the land of the living and uh, spread the gospel of uh, melancholy tunes. And, uh, <laughs> and to be honest, we're, we're working our butts off to make, make sure that we're going um, to visit your lovely country as well later on in the year. Since we're not playing Canada on the first track, the first uh, North American leg of the Neo Noir tour. So, so that doesn't mean that we have uh, forgotten you. Well, thank you so much for not forgetting us here in dear old Canada. Can't wait to have you v- come and visit. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into this record, Neon Noir. I went ahead and gave it a listen. Absolutely incredible. And I'm curious, what was the greatest moment for you producing this record, Vile? Um, the fact that I didn't have to check on anybody's you know, timetable when we can rehearse and when we can work on the album. So working on it by myself enabled me to be just as egocentric as one should when creating an album. So uh, I stayed up, you know, I felt like a, a kid in a candy store. I was able to stay up until six o'clock in the morning recording some silly hand claps or whatever might take my fancy at that time. So it, it was, it, it's pretty special working, working that way and something that's very new to me. But at the same time, you know, that's, that's what I was missing. I was missing the camaraderie and the, 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 the friendship and, and the other things besides music that are so important uh, in having a band, you know, hanging out and having a shoulders crying. I was just crying on my, you know, my, you know, <laughs> my computer monitor. So, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, it doesn't, it doesn't quite feel the same. Okay, let's unpackage that statement. Doesn't quite feel the same. So, working by yourself for the first time, staying up until six a.m. recording hand claps or or whatever. But but Vile, first time working by yourself. Take us through that. And, and- with the band as well, you know, you have to remember that usually when you have five, five band members, um, there's there's always somebody's having a problem with getting a babysitter. Or some something is going down, you know, in, in life in general. And uh, I remember when we started working on on, on our last album, it, it was like if you actually took the take the calendar in your hands, sit down with five guys, uh, all of a sudden you realize there's not a lot of days we can rehearse. Because everybody's got so many things going on because of families and because of whatever. So other, you know, activities. So, so working by myself, that's sort of, that, that wasn't a question at all. It enabled me to spend as much time on as my new details as I would love to. And then to the other point is, is the fact that, uh, this, this comes out or came out, um, rather on my own label. So Spine Farm are doing the, dis- the distribution. And, uh, and so are Universal Music here in Finland. But, uh, it's, it's, uh, the label is Hardigram Records. So I didn't have any A&Rs. I didn't have any artistic meetings with anybody. And I uh, was given free reign regarding, uh, cover artwork and, and, uh, the music. And, uh, of course, I do like to work, uh, with record company people because at times it's, uh, it's good to have somebody who sees the forest for the trees, you know, who can sort of like give you another perspective on the music and, and uh, because you, as an artist, you're supposed to be lost in the making of it. And uh, but at times you get a bit too far up your own, whatever. Well, and you bring up some really good points there, Vila, especially for our listeners who are musicians themselves. I mean, you know, who resonates right now with hard to get members together to rehearse because of life events and, you know, the convenience of working by yourself, being able to spend as much time as possible on, you know, minute details, as you had, as you had put it. 
don't have anybody to answer to, no A&Rs, no artistic meetings, you know, free reign on everything, including the artwork. But as you had mentioned as well, though, labels are helpful and it's helpful to have somebody there to keep the perspective and see the perspective as, as you had said, artists can get lost in the making of their art, which takes me to my next question, Vile. Was that a challenge for you or what was the challenge for you producing this record? Um, yeah, well, I think, um, I think it's, uh, it's a talent sort of losing the perspective just as much as you need to, whenever you need to. It's like a superpower sort of thing. And uh, I've been working on it for many years. It's the same thing as knowing when to finish, when you're done with something. You know, when, when, when sort of like the, you're just putting icing on the icing on the cake. It just doesn't make it, it doesn't actually make it different. It's just, it's just more. And, uh, and uh, that's, that's something that I've, I've learned along the way. But yeah, it, it, it's tough. And I, I like ear candy. So uh, I li- like little tiny details and too many of them. Well, and that's an incredible statement, a superpower to know when to lose the forest for the trees when you need to and bring it back, like knowing when to, you know, it's time to put the icing on the cake. Um, and then, of course, you mentioned ear candy, which we'll get into in a little bit. But I mean, for me, I just the blank page of creating an album would seem like a challenge to me. I, I think the, the idea of all of a sudden creating an album from scratch, that was the uh, that was the more, most insane challenge I've ever put myself up to. Because when you actually don't have anything, it just sounds um, unattainable. It sounds very abstract and it sounds insane at a task. But uh, I, I think it was quite hard to finish the whole thing um, when you're like halfway through. And during the pandemic, when people had sort of, especially musicians, we had started to lose faith because we lost it the second summer of festivals. So it seemed that it's never ending thing. And uh, so there was no end in sight, and and uh, still at the same time trying to keep the uh, the creative energy going. It, it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but um, but yeah, it's um, I, I yeah, I think that that was the that was the biggest challenge. So like, actually make sure that I would get the whole thing finished, that it would actually turn into an album, not just some haphazard semi finished songs, you know, lying somewhere on a hard drive. Yeah, I mean, come on, musicians listening in right now, how familiar does that sound? Just a bunch of songs lying on a hard drive somewhere, rather than finishing them, turning them into an album, and then getting an interview on the Rock Metal Podcast. I mean, why not, right? (laughs) Why not? Now, we mentioned Ear Candy earlier on. I heard hand claps and appreciated that you stayed up until 6 a.m. recording hand claps. So just so you know, it resonated with someone halfway around the world. Imagine. Imagine yeah. just, a, just a hand clap, you know? Just a hand clap. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lot of hand claps on that album. I, I, I love that sort of, not only the 80s, but also the hip-hop vibe, where you have a lot of claps, or you used to have a lot of claps in the early 90s. So, um, so I, I just... And I, I grew up with also listening to quite a bit of hip hop, not understanding the lyrics at all back in the 80s. Like Eric B. and Rakim's Follow the Leader, that was one of the first vinyl I got, you know, when I got into into that sort of music. And, and uh, so I fell in love with the sound of uh, the Oberheim DX, the drum machine. A lot of rap artists, Run DMC used it quite a bit. And then uh, a very similar drum machine was used by A New Order and the Sisters of Mass. It's very lo fi in a very crunchy and a beautiful way. So, so, um, so I use that stuff too. A lot of old school drum machines come together with the real hand claps. And, and uh, now you can see if why it took until six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, very cool shout out to some old school drum machines doing some lo-fi claps, mixing them in with the real hand claps. So you obviously mentioned a bit of gear, which drives, you know, my curiosity. Vile, were there any other pieces of equipment that you used on the record? Did anything surprise you? Oh, uh, there was a a ton of lessons learned because I haven't haven't really recorded a proper album before. I've recorded some vocals, track vocals for a few backing vocal thingies for my friends and and uh, and some lead vocals myself. But uh, yeah, I think it was the entirety of it because at the end of the day, you know, a good hand clap sounds better with a great snare sound. So mm-hmm. so as as in music, they all they, it needs to stack. Yep. And you know, if you, if you have a great um, let's say <laughs> once again hand clap sound by itself. <laughs> It doesn't necessarily make any sense. You have to have a great song around it, and it has to serve a purpose, and has has to have a need. And you know, if there's a hand clap, there's massive sound uh, with a lot of bass and bottom end. It's really boomy. Then the snare can't be really boomy because otherwise they're going to fight each other. 
um, a stupid and simple example, I know, but uh, but it's a uh, it's a millions of goals in one song, and, and uh, I I think that it's just uh, professionals don't really speak of them because they don't need to. It's second nature, but uh, but uh, to me it wasn't so much. So there was a there was a lot of firsts on this one. Regarding, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an analog gig. I record onto Pro Tools. That's my recording medium. But, uh, I have an API desk, uh, uh, 1608, like a 32 channel analog board. And, uh, all my effects, like a lot, lot of the effects you hear on the album are not plugins. They're printed. They're like, um, I have a lot of late seventies digital stuff and eighties, all the classic lexicon and AMS and all those reverbs that universal audio makes. So I have all that stuff, uh, in hardware. Because I think it, to me it doesn't it, it does sound better and it makes the creative process more more uh, enjoyable as as there's um you know it's just uh, those little tiny we're looking for the beauty spots the beauty marks you know the little tiny imperfections those those that that's what makes music interesting so it's tough to tough to get that stuff if you're working completely in the box but then again once again I'm I'm maybe I'm just a tad too old my uh, the ev- evolution ha- hadn't sort of like developed into a stage where my fingers would be evolved enough to sort of spend twenty four seven on a on a mouse. So it, it, rather, my hands want to work on like real old school big knobs and and faders and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, ain't nothing wrong with that. And then you get something unique in time that's printed. That you know, there it was, there it is. Yeah, and the point is, yeah, and the good, uh, I think the important point about all of this is like. At least in my case, most of the albums that are on my, you know, top ten, uh, they're weird sounding albums. I love the Misfits. I love the all Black Sabbath albums, all all Black Sabbath stuff, and and Depeche Mode, and they they had very unique sounds, and they weren't generic. They weren't like everybody else. That's what makes them classics. So I, I think it's important to try to go the uh, take the road less traveled, as they say, you know, uh, and that might mean. Uh, just be, be, we're gonna end up staying up until six o'clock in the morning just to you know find find the right little hand claps or whatever the, there might be tambourines are a good example as well but uh uh, uh but uh but it's it's worth it because hopefully it makes makes the entirety of the album sound a bit in a positive sense out of step you know they doesn't sound like what is going on in that particular genre of music today. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what I don't want to do. I, I want it to sound unique and organic, and I want it to sound like myself. You know, warts and all. <laughs> warts and all, baby. Looking for the beauty marks and the imperfections. Great albums weren't generic, and that's what makes them classics. More to come, but let's go ahead and check in with our beautiful sponsors. Two Mads responsible for producing, mixing, and mastering some of the best metal for over the last 20 years. From Meshuga to The Haunted to Poison Black, Kemper Profiler packs for guitar players, and Easy Drummer expansion packs for programming drums. Two Madsen can take your production to a level previously unheard. Head over to twomadsen.com. That's twomadsen.com. T-U-E-M-A-D-S-E-N. Click contact, fill out the info for your next project, and let Two know that the Rock Metal Podcast sent you. Wormhole Death is a modern record label, publishing, and film production company born in 2008. Getting signed to this label means global distribution, publishing, and marketing with Wormhole Death's roster of global partnerships. Head over to wormholedeath.com. That's wormholedeath.com. Submit your band and let them know the Rock Metal Podcast sent you. How would you define success at this stage of your career, Vile? I think, honestly, I think regarding success, you know, there's so many. It's a, it's a multi-layered beast. Because there's the, there's the process of working on the art, and that's something that's very personal. That's something that you're, what you are hearing is the proof that I actually had that made that session. But there's a lot of a lot of um, wasted tracks, and a lot of wasted hours, and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears um, that make it, the process very personal. And that process in itself is is, is very important because that that was a big evolutionary moment for me and, and a learning lesson. And uh, and it, yeah, it was um. I think that that was a big success in that sort of sense. But then, then I think the next step is obviously the next step was to get the album out, and now the next next step from this point on is is to be able to tour. And we just played the first three gigs here in Helsinki um, about a week and a half ago, and uh, they went really well. And I'm feeling really positive because you know it's a uh, touring is not hard, but uh, I've never been super confident or comfortable with it. So, so, um, so it's a uh, it's it's great that we've rehearsed a ton, and uh, people seem to enjoy the set and all that. So so that, that that's a good thing in my book. 
So there's mm-hmm. various uh, various degrees of su- success, not only degrees, but sort of like a, uh, parallel paths. So uh, there's there's not a one single barometer of success that uh, that I guess not. You know, so of course I, I like myself to be the first you know artist on the moon, you know, shaking my strut and and uh, be number one everywhere and, and uh, do that sort of thing. But uh, I do have to be a bit realistic <laughs> as well. So. Uh, so otherwise, otherwise, you know, it's all going to be just a, you know, a domino effect, a series of uh, disappointments, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, you, you mentioned a lot of really good things. I mean, just being able to do the record the way that you did it, getting the album out, learning as much as you did. I mean, there's so many cool things. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. But then at the end of the day, if you're thinking uh, in terms of um, bread, bread on the table, you know, that's... Um, there's like the spiritual journeys and then there's the sort of like monetary journeys and, and everything in between. And, and commerce and art, they don't go very well together. It's always a, it's like the hemispheres of the brain, you know, the sort of like creative, creative and the more sort of like mathematical part. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make it all work and uh, it, it's looking good. I'm, I'm just, a thing I'm really happy about in the larger scale is the fact that, uh, it's not a given or if it's not something I or whomever can take for granted that after all these years being away from the realm of rock and roll, um, that people would still remember my name and actually listen to the music and actually go and listen, you know, buy the album and stuff. It's pretty darn amazing. And mm-hmm. on the on the tour now, this spring, there's a lot, a lot of the gigs I've been selling out, especially in Europe and a few of them in the States. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing to have this sort of mm-hmm. past that are, that's not, not completely hated by everybody. You know, it's a it's a it's a weird position to be in, but I'm I'm not complaining. At yeah, all. yeah, no, and, and honestly, I'm not surprised either. I mean, it's it's one of those uh, things where you know, one day in high school, I'm watching MTV and it's you, and then you know, the next day, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm chatting with whom today? How did I get here? Um, you know, so the fact that you're still relevant, you know, that that says well, a lot. Thank a lot. You. Yeah. And the thing, you know, it's, it's one of those things is like, I would have never guessed myself, you know, a few years back that I would be here doing this. It is, uh, what I do love about being in the, in the music, not necessarily business, but in the world of music, doing, doing my little thing here is the fact that it, uh, that it is still full of surprises. There's a lot of U-turns and there's a re- weird, weird twists and turns and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, successful and less successful punchlines along the way so mm-hmm. so i'm 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 happy i'm happy good. being being here now yeah that's good and i mean as you said vla music full of a lot of surprises u turns weird twists and turns successful and less successful punchlines along the way what's the one thing or the number one thing you want people to do right now vla you know what, what i'm hoping is that is that um we can hopefully brush the past few years aside forget all about it and uh, go forwards and uh, I'm hoping that people will be healthy that's that's not a spiritual me- message it's just a, a vibey thing that I that I, I think it's important anyway to all of us and at the end of the day we can't do any I can't do what I do you can't do what you do if if um, if we're you know sucked into another black hole like the pandemic and and with the the war that is pretty close to us as well here in Europe it's a mm-hmm. uh, you know it's a uh, Let's say that the world doesn't go any less crazy. So uh, music is uh, music is a good way to, at least for me, to get away from it all at times. And I hope and I hope that that music in general, and uh, in this case, of, of, for obvious reasons, my music would would be like a safe haven and a shelter uh, on a bad day, on a rainy day, or, or how ma- however you want to put it. So so uh, if on top of that you want to buy a ticket to a gig or uh, or get the album, you know, please do do so. It, uh, it'll just enable me to uh, continue doing this. Absolutely. So go ahead and head over to www.therockmetalpodcast.ca. There you can get today's show notes, all of the extra goodies, music videos, everything that you need in order to be able to connect with Vile. All right, Vile, thank you so much for coming on to The Rock Metal Podcast today. Oh, no. Thank you very much for having me. 
That's it for this episode of the Rock Metal Podcast. Stay tuned because next week we're going to be chatting with Jamie Preciado of the band Pierce the Veil. They hired an incredible producer and did everything they could to make sure they never make the same record twice. They even grabbed an Airbnb and turned it into a studio in New Orleans. Go ahead and hit subscribe on your podcast player, share it with your friends, and I'll see you next week.